गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन एंड वेलकम फॉर टूडे सेशन इन लास्ट सेशन वी वेर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट सोशलिज्म एंड इट्स एडवांटेजेस सोशलिज्म एज यू ऑलरेडी नो सोशलिज्म इज डिफाइंड एज द सोशल ओनरशिप ऑफ मीन्स ऑफ प्रोडक्शन एंड द एम इज टू मैक्सिमाइज द सोशल वेलफेयर एंड द पब्लिक बेनिफिट सोशल बेनिफिट इज द मेन एम then we have discussed about the various features of socialism and then we have discussed the advantages now today we will discuss about the limitations of socialism the first one limitation that faced by uh, customers or industries in socialism is loss of consumer sovereignty that is the customer do not have any power in socialism actually in general life we are uh, we are many of time hearing and seeing that customer is a king of market in the sense whatever is demanded by customer in market are produced by the manufacturer and uh, the customers need the aim of manufacturer is to fulfill the customer's need and preferences with the changing customer's demand the manufacturers also change the production however the same scenario is not there in socialism it means in socialism consumers are not allowed to uh, make their demand in market they have to purchase whatever is produced by the companies that and the companies are highly controlled by the government in socialism the government decide what to produce when to produce how to produce for whom to produced and in what quantity to be produced so major decision related with the product that is the basic economic problems are already set by the government and hence there is no scope for innovation regarding the customers need and hence here in socialism customer do not have any type of freedom freedom to ask for a specific good freedom to raise the demand free uh, freedom for innovation of the product etc so such type of freedom are not provided in socialism and hence in socialism customers are not the powerful entity unlike other economic system then the second one is no freedom of occupation here in socialism may, uh, the government owns all the type of businesses and hence <coughs> the private people do not have any choice regarding the occupation it means they do not have occupational freedom unlike other economic system they uh, uh, a person can start any type of legal business like we have earlier seen in capitalism that a person can start any type of legal business whereas in socialism the businesses are controlled and run by the government means of production are controlled by government however if there is a scope of any private organization then too they are also controlled by the government and hence here is the, uh, there is no occupational freedom provided to any person in socialism they have to do work whatever is predetermined and predecided by the government now the third limitation is mis misallocation of resources generally it is been assumed that the resources are allocated in socialism are efficient however in reality the scenario is totally opposite many of time it has been seen that such countries wherein the government allocate the resources will ultimately lead to misallocation of resources 
it means the resources are not allocated in a proper way as the government is busy in their uh, other uh, essential functions and hence it becomes difficult for government to focus on the resource allocation. The other thing is many of time uh, due to uh, influence of uh, certain people uh, focus of uh, ruling party is diverted by some uh, opposition party the etc will ultimately lead to misallocation of resources. Further to uh, do a proper allocation government need to do a lot of activities like preparation of budget identifying the need then identifying the available resources and then deciding what resources should be allocated this many this much of time is not with the government and hence generally government allocate the resources on, on uh, by not doing any kind of proper way and hence ultimately it will lead to misallocation of resources the next limitation is bureaucratic practices generally in socialism government follows a very rigid practices of implementation of rules and regulation here no any kind of uh, uh, innovation is allowed the government is running as per their old rules and regulation once they are formulated such rules and regulation need to be changed with the change in time as the time changes certain amount of changes in business in product etc need to be there but government do not want to make such a kind of changes and they want to follow whatever is been followed since many years further government do not allowed any kind of flexibility in their rules and regulation and hence government here followed their practices the old practices rigidly and blindly without any scope of improvement in that and the last one is known existence of competition a good and healthy competition is very necessary and must requirement of market development but in socialism there is no competition or we can say there is a private sector monopoly even if there, there are more than one companies run by the government still they are not actually competing with each other as the production etc are controlled by the government and in uh, absence of such competition the companies are not motivated for conducting any innovative work any research activity and hence the ultimately it will lead to loss for the society it will lead to loss for the customers as well as for the economy so if there is some competition in market then to remain in competition the companies may go for invention innovation etc however in socialism there is no such competition exist and there is surety that the government will not allowed any business to get out from the market due to competition and hence the companies are not uh, ready to involve in various research related innovation innovation and invention activities so that ultimately will lead to loss for the customers as well as for the society so that is all about today's session have a nice day goodbye